Can you speak a little more about the fuel cells versus battery electric vehicles for transport? Uh, personally, I, I'm hugely bullish on battery electrics. I have huge criticisms of hydrogen fuel cells, but I'm interested in your take. So the, the problem I have is that I, I, I worry that the hydrogen um, fuel cells for vehicle, it kind of doesn't solve a problem that we don't have. And when I say it doesn't solve it, because if you look at battery vehicles, uh, if, you, if you've got electricity and you stick it into an electric vehicle and you drive, you've, what you've got is actually a very, very high performing vehicle. Look at obviously the Tesla, but it's quieter, it accelerates better and you can charge it at home or at your office. Um, this is much better than something that's noisy um, and has poorer performance, and you have to have a gearbox and more moving parts, uh, and it's inconvenient, you have to go to a gas station. And by the way, the other thing that's not, I think, been fully uh, understood by a lot of, um, particularly a lot of you know, the market hasn't internalized, that there's also lower maintenance costs. There are just fewer moving parts, much more solid state controls, much more sealed uh, um, you know, the, the motors, uh, the, the electrical motors are sealed. You don't have gearbox very often, depending on the design of the car. But um, even the brakes do better with the regenerative braking. And, and regenerative, exactly regenerative braking, which produces less particulates. By the way, it's better for air quality probably as well. Um, it's yeah. just kind of a better. So, but the maintenance cost is an interesting one because maintenance cost is also my cost to be without my car for two days whilst the garage does stuff. So it's a better solution. So, the, so I'm very bullish on electric vehicles. The disadvantage, of course, is um, range and flexibility. Which you say, ah, you know, a fuel cell, a hydrogen fuel cell, you'd be able to go anywhere and you could refill it just like, yep, yeah, except that the infrastructure is not in place. Electricity we actually have pretty much everywhere that you or I would want to drive uh, a, a vehicle. Whereas hydrogen, you, you know, we just don't have that infrastructure. So you've got massive uh, infrastructure investment to, to get there. Um, and then you back up and you say, well, hang on a second, you still have to get the hydrogen from somewhere. And if you go electricity, it's hydrolysis to produce hydrogen, and you have to store it, move, around, move it around, store it, decant it into the vehicle, store it some more, and then use it. That, and each stage you've got losses, and each stage you've got costs. And each stage you're going to have to invest as capital involved. I just think that electricity to battery to motor is just going to, it's like, how can you beat that? Now, so fuel cells will improve, but so will battery chemistries. And I'm finding it hard to see the break point at which we all go, oh my goodness, hydrogen is so much better. Now, you get something like um, a forklift truck in a warehouse, and I've done a lot of work in the previous life, dots being joined again in warehouses with food industry. And of course, you, know, you want to pick up a pallet, move it around, drop it off, etc. You can't do that with a diesel-powered forklift in a closed space. You've got to have an electric forklift. And then the question is, how do you recharge the batteries? Forklifts are expensive. You've got situations where you are working in those warehouses 24-7. Your forklift should be working 24-7. Otherwise, the capital in your forklift is sitting there while you charge it. Or you do battery swaps, which are, frankly, you know, the, the fewer bits of heavy things you're moving around and, and the fewer machines you have in those environments, the safer they are. Um, and so, basically, a hydrogen fuel cell powered forklift truck, so the plug power more, makes total sense. But it's the added utility that makes it work. It's, it's not more convenient, it's not, it's not cheaper, it's going to be an expensive city, but it's going to have more utility. Well, I think you've just stated uh, everything exactly as I think it, so I'm very <laughs> relieved and happy that you're on the same page with that, because there are differences of opinion among experts in this field. But, uh, I mean, the way I talk about it often, and I'm curious what, what you think are the top uh, attractions to battery electric vehicles. For me, the number one is actually convenience. Yeah. Even though yes. the whole discussion is framed around the inconvenience of yes. of charging yes. outside of home, yes. but you charge from home, you don't have to go to gas stations. Uh, yeah. what, where we're going though is to deconstruct mobility into uh, you know so you won't, it, it's not so much do you have a car yes no it's all about um, you want to be mobile you want to be able to move around 
and you will be flexible. You'll have a bundle of different ways of doing things. And so for a particular type of journey, it'll be public transport, car sharing. Uh, you know, I, I live in London. I have, as you may have noticed, I live in London. Did I, did I say I live in London? <laughs> did I mention I London? I think we started with that conversation. So I live in London, <laughs> and I have three small children, and I don't have a car. When I tell people this, they're horrified. How can you possibly survive? Are you making some kind of statement? Yes, I'm making a statement that I don't need the hassle of a car. Like, what do I do? Well, I use taxis. I use private hire vehicles and mini cabs. I use the tube. I use buses. I use Boris bikes. I walk a great deal. Um, what else? I use, I've used the river uh, boats. I've, You've used the Emirates airline. I've used now. I have to list everything so it's have some relevance. Um, I've used overland train, and um, and it works. And I, now, and now the other thing I do is I do car sharing when I need a car. I've got a Zipcar card, and I use car sharing. And if I want to go out of town, I wish the Zipcars were electric. Very excited about Monsieur Bolloré coming into London and doing electric car sharing. Or Zipcar can do it as well. Or hopefully they do it a little bit in the US. But and then the other thing is, if I want to go outside London and I need a car um, to go to uh, relatives in Wales or, or, or relatives uh, near Oxford, then I would just want to be able to take a different Zipcar with an internal combustion engine. Why not? Because it's nice and flexible. And it fits my needs. When you start to live like that, then you see that the electric vehicle in London, you know, it, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Um, so I, I'm, I'm basically just I'm bullish about it um, because it's, you know, it's it, more it, convenient. for those sorts of short commuter journeys, it's just perfect. It's just perfect. Um, and the other thing is.